I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about iTunes-style scrolling, JavaScript package managers, and mobile shelving. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool iTunes scroller on CodePen. Now, you might have seen this before, I think. In, in iTunes. In iTunes. They call it, the, uh, they call it CoverFlow, right. I think. And it's basically this design pattern where you see album art and you can kind of swipe through it. And Well, let me just show you. Almost like it was the late 90s and you were looking through posters at a record store. Exactly. So here we have this pen in CodePen. It's a really cool site for sharing code. And basically, we can just go ahead and scroll through this album art, and it'll kind of swipe to the next piece of artwork, and it will animate smoothly. And you also notice on the left and right sides, as it kind of falls out of the queue here, it will go ahead and fade out. So that's, that's pretty cool. The HTML is actually quite basic. It's just a bunch of links with uh, images, and then if we look at the CSS, it starts to get a little bit more interesting. Basically, they're using uh, 3D transforms and transitions, and they're adding classes using JavaScript as we go from one album to the next. So as we go through here, the classes are actually being changed by this code here. So it adds left hidden, left, middle, right, etc. And then as it adds those classes, a transition happens in the CSS. So this isn't like a framework or anything. It's just an interesting piece of code. And this is a popular design pattern. And this is seems like a pretty good way to do it. So I have not heard of a single one of those bands that they're using as examples. Really? Really. Right. I'm stuck in the late 90s as <laughs> far as music goes. Evidently. <laughs> Next up, we have a JavaScript library called Sly. Now, this implements exactly what we were just talking about, the cover flow-ish style transitions, into a jQuery plugin. Hey, and look at that. It's not just a bunch of code. It's actually a plugin. <laughs> I know. It, it segways, right? Uh, that, was, that was very nice. Jason. And I mean our transition, not the vehicle. Um, so <laughs> yeah, if you take a look, they have a nice little demo on the page that uh, I'm just using the, the scrolling right here on my uh, MacBook's trackpad, but you can also use the buttons to go back and forth. Uh, on the top, it shows you where it goes. You hit next, or even go straight to the end. Now, this is interesting. It works as a jQuery plugin. Uh, it does depend on jQuery 1.7 plus, but that's uh, probably something that you should be on anyway. Now, um, it's interesting. It does work in every desktop browser, even IE6, uh, but that's due to uh, being an accident rather than completely on purpose. Uh, now, uh, what's really interesting about this plugin is it will use jQuery's animation function if it's available, uh, but if your browser supports CSS3, it will use that instead. This is going to be really important for performance reasons because if you're on a mobile browser, for example, it will offload the animations to the GPU instead of the CPU, which will save your mobile web browser battery life. Well, and it'll also have uh, higher frame rates. Yeah. The animation will look a lot smoother. So great plugin. Check that out. Sly. And actually, I'm curious, how, how are they doing the detection of CSS3 features? Do you know? Did you look into that? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think they're using feature detection. OK. Because I was curious if they were using the the at supports rule, which we covered in a previous oh, episode. Oh, do you should go back and check that out. But at supports is only in the latest edge versions of most browsers at this point, so it's doubtful. That's right. So next up is jQuery Shapeshift. Now, if you're familiar with the jQuery Masonry plugin, uh, this will be familiar to you. Or if you're just familiar with Pinterest, the popular website for, uh, I guess, pinning various stuff, for lack of a better term. Uh, this will also be familiar to you. Basically, it's this jQuery plugin that can take a bunch of various sized divs like this or various sized block level elements 
and it will arrange them into this nice grid. And the important thing to notice here is that even if things are different heights, it can go ahead and arrange them nicely and kind of get rid of that space in between. The other cool thing that Shapeshift can do is you can actually drag and drop things and it will reflow the logical order, which is actually pretty impressive. I, I'm kind of blown away by this. Of course, masonry did all of this, but it did not do the drag and drop stuff. So this is actually a little bit better than that previous plugin. So if you want to go ahead and create kind of a, a Pinterest style layout for your website, this would be a pretty good way to do it. I think if I could choose one superpower, it wouldn't necessarily be shape-shifting, but that would be up there. For sure. Next up, we have a plugin called Packery. This is a jQuery plugin that is also the sequel to Masonry. It's by the same author. Now, we generally don't talk about commercial products on the show, but uh, this one's so good, we just had to let you know about it. Also, Masonry has you know a, a huge following. A lot of people are probably using it. So, uh, Packery does pretty much everything that... Nick was talking about in the last plugin, Shapeshift, um, but it gives you some more options and it also gives you different methods and events to chain the different behavior together should you want it. So just like the Shapeshift plugin, you can drag and drop your different divs. Um, you can also keep everything bound to a certain location. The nice thing about the Packery plugin, ton of different options. You can work with the different events. So once the layout has been arranged, execute different events and attach it to your different divs. Um, so relatively inexpensive plugin. Check that out. It'll be in the show notes, which you can get to on our YouTube channel or iTunes. Look at that, Jason. You just keep one-upping me. Just, just, <laughs> just every link here. Oh, that's cool. Next up is yet another cool thing on CodePen. I don't think Jason has a plugin for this one. I don't. Uh, basically, it's just this little peeling sticker. So you can hover over the sticker and it will go ahead and peel off and you can go ahead and reveal text or maybe an image beneath it. Uh, this might be kind of cool for a number of things. I like it because the animation doesn't just play automatically. You actually have to engage with the element on the page in order to see the animation. A lot of times having too many animations on your page can be distracting, but this is nice because you're actually uh, interacting it with it. The way that they're doing this is with CSS transitions and transforms. So they have a couple of different divs here, which it's not totally semantic. In fact, it's actually fairly unsemantic, but that's okay. It's, it's cool enough that I'll, I'll let this one slide. <laughs> um, I'm apparently the semantic police now here. Uh, but basically, uh, if you go ahead and wrap this element here with this, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, this circle wrapper class, it will actually mask off part of this div, which is rounded with CSS border radii. And the other thing that they're doing is they are rotating this element. So you see the sticky here, they have it rotated 45 degrees. That's why we have this cut in the upper right here. And then as you hover over it, it actually rotates it. So that's how we get that kind of cool peeling effect where it looks like it's going from the upper right down to the, the bottom there. So pretty nifty little piece of code there. And I also like that it, it doesn't use JavaScript. Of course, this won't work in really old browsers like IE6, but nonetheless, it's, it's pretty cool. So um, good thing that you didn't cite them being a member of the semantic police. Hopefully you won't report them to the SBI either. <laughs> Next up over on the TechPro blog, we have an article on package managers. This is an introductory guide for the front end developer. Now, a uh, package manager that they're talking about is going to let you kind of concatenate all your CSS, JavaScript, and HTML files into a single project. And then it uses Node, uh, NPM, and a couple projects to watch what you do. Now, the reason you would want to use something like a package manager is when you're ready to deploy your website, the package manager will be able to concatenate and minify all your JavaScripts and CSS and just make that, you know, maybe gzip your assets, give you a lot more performance on the front end after going through and optimizing your assets. So TLDR, this will make your website load faster. Yes, that is a wonderful TLDR. Got it. And this article goes over 
absolutely everything you need to do to get up and running. It talks about installing Node, you know, even on Windows, goes over what a package manager is, how NPM or the Node package manager will arrange your project, and then walks through the different projects that you can use to manage all of your different packages. So, uh, great article. Check this out. It's a little bit too long to go in depth here on the show, but again, it'll be in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a design search engine where you can go ahead and type in stuff if you're looking for inspiration. So, let's, let's check it out here. It looks like the default search must be something to do with hand lettering because if you scroll through here, they've got a lot of really nice hand-drawn letters. That's pretty cool. But let's say we were looking for inspiration for icons. We needed to create an icon set. Looks like I've already searched for that. Funny how that is. <laughs> um, so if I go ahead and type in icons and hit enter, it will go ahead and send the request. And there it goes. So we can scroll down here. And it's not perfect. It'll give you some things that aren't quite relevant like this. this shelf. I don't know why that came up or this, this logo here, but in general, it's pretty good. Uh, if we scroll down, you can see that it's brought back a ton of different icon sets, and I think this is probably curated to some degree or another because it's it's really, really nice in terms of the results that it brings back. It doesn't yeah. bring back just a bunch of junk, so it's a little bit better than using, say, Google Image Search, you know, to look for inspiration. Yeah, really great site. Next up, we have a library called snap.js. Now, if you've watched previous episodes of the Treehouse Show, we've talked about the pattern where you hit the little three-bar icon and then a shelf will slide out from the left or right of your website, possibly top or bottom. Snap.js is a library for creating these transitions in JavaScript. And we can uh, just check out a demo right here. Here's the default demo. This page not very interesting. But click the icon, boom, comes right out to the side. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And as you would expect, a ton of different options. You can open this on the left or the right. We call that being ambidextrous in the field of uh, JavaScript plugins. Uh, anyway, ton of different options, ton of different class names that you can use, different settings, basically whatever you need to create these style menus. Now, this is a pattern that you know as we've talked about before is really taking hold a lot these days, and a lot of sites are transitioning towards it. So there you go, snap.js. Very cool stuff. Well, I think that's it for this week's episode. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. If you like this podcast, please rate us in iTunes. Search for The Treehouse Show. You can get show notes and more on iTunes or on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one and learn about web design, web development, mobile, iOS, Android, business, and a whole bunch of other stuff, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.